let's call the uh, b um, meeting of the uh, Public Safety Committee to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Boyd. Present. Alderwoman Howard. Present. Alderwoman Hubbard. Present. Alderman Muhammad. Alderwoman Boyd. Present. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Here. Chairman Bacoro. Present. President Reed. Here. Step in present, you have quorum. Okay. Well, the first thing we have to do is approve the minutes of the uh, the June 18th meeting. Uh, take a motion to approve the minutes. I move to approve the minutes of June 18th, 2020. Second. Second. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Howard. Aye. Alderman Hubbard. Aye. Alderman Muhammad. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Clark Hubbard. Aye. Chairman Bacoro. Aye. President Reed. Aye. Seven aye votes. So I think the next part, there's a committee sub to uh, board bill 63. So I believe we'll need a motion to put the committee sub in front of us. Uh, Mr. Clark. Uh, yes. Uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Well, no, I, I believe we need to- I think Alderman from the 22nd was about to do it. For you. Okay. Um, I move to put board bill 63 committee substitute before the committee. And Second. Okay. And um, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Previous roll. Hearing no, no objection to previous roll. Uh, Mr. President, will you uh, kind of just go through your committee sub with us and, and, the, and then your changes? And uh, after that, when we get the full thing in front of us, I think then we'll have speakers come on. Okay, so would you like me to go through the committee sub and then also through the eight amendments? I, I would think so. I think in, unless you think otherwise, um, this way the speakers, because some of the stuff that you're going to address, the speakers might already know. So okay. I, th I think we'd give them a full idea of what we're doing and then, okay. and then do it. All right, you, uh, everyone should have received a clean copy of uh, Board Bill 63 Committee Substitute, right? It's a five page bill that addresses the use of force in the St. Louis City Police Department. Uh, if you remember in 2014, after the shooting of Michael Brown, um, the St. Louis City Police Department and also St. Louis County Police Department took up some use of force uh, uh, policy changes and actually implemented some things in their policy. St. Louis City and St. Louis County at that time implemented a uh, ban on chokeholds and strangleholds, right, as part of their policy. Uh, so part of what this board bill does is it takes up some of those policies and, and makes them law, right, and makes them unlawful. So that any police department, any police chief, uh, uh, any you know public safety director or mayor that comes after this point, cannot just automatically remove those policies. It also puts in a re a duty to report, so that if another officer uh, sees a, a you know another officer, a fellow officer uh, engaging in an unlawful act they will ha now have a duty to report that and then it can be on the books and we have an opportunity for some transparency related to it. There's also penalties uh, and um, uh, penalties attached to all of these uh, items that are in here today. Um, that covers the majority of it. We also have in it a, a, a reporting requirement. So if the federal state government takes up and institutes a national database, our, our policy will all, not policy, our ordinance will already be in place requiring our police department to follow that and to report 
uh, based on the various different items that are in uh, the board bill. And there's also a ban on no knock warrants. Uh, and that's one of the things that I would imagine we're gonna have some debate on today. Um, and from my standpoint, um, the no knock warrants, it's important to have it in our board bill. Um, some some no knock warrants, depending on which courts they're going to and what, what the issue is, uh, it may, may be outside of the control of the local municipality, right? But this covers us in terms of no knock warrants. So that is the board bill, uh, our overview of the board bill, and we can talk in detail about any of those sections I've covered. Um, and then we have eight amendments. Now the amendments, uh, uh, they clean up some of the language. Uh, it, 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 they put the language more in line, in line with what you're seeing in some of the board bills that are being introduced in cities across the nation. And it helps. We, we lost your voice. Let's see. We, I think we lost the president's sound. He may have to re-log in. I don't. I don't hear him. Hey, Luce, we lost. We lost your voice. Yeah, my, uh, the power went out on my block. It just popped back on. <laughs> okay. I was saying, because we lost you there for a minute. My computer is rebooting now. Okay, that's okay. So the so, power went out on my block, so maybe you just go to the speakers, and then when I get back, when my computer quick reboots and booting right now. But okay, I got power in our block. Okay, well, I actually got you held up to the speaker on my thing, so people, uh, we can hear you. Uh, right. So if, if they can, uh, if you would just want to go to speakers right now, that'd be great. I'm waiting for my computer to reboot, and then I'll join the meeting as soon as my computer reboots. Okay. Well, then, right. then, then okay. So, uh, Madam Clerk, you want to go ahead and go down the list of speakers? Are, are you there? We got, I, I have them in front of me, if not. And there's a letter that needs to be read in from the Ethical Society. So, um, if you want to start, uh, I, I guess go start with number one and we'll go down the list. Okay, so the first speaker is what you're asking me to read out? Yeah, I think so. Okay, is it uh, Darcy is the first person? Yeah, Darcy, yeah, Kern, Darcy okay. Kern. Are they here with us? Hi, I'm here. Oh, I'm okay, how you doing? Hi, I'm good. Um, I actually had a few questions. I actually attended the last meeting as well. And I was really concerned that the bill was not available. The bill that was being discussed in the committee was not available to the taxpayers to view while you were discussing it. Okay. It's, um, it's online. Only the June 12th can... edition, only the June 12th copy is available. Okay. I mean, Okay, so I the committee sub that they sent out. Um, the clerk can send you a copy if you would like, and then you can always speak later in the meeting or speak. You know, we can keep I would love off. that. Okay, so if, if you, I think she has your email address. If you can send her the the complete committee substitute, and then we'll kind of move you toward the back of the meeting. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, no problem. So Madam Clerk, can you do that? Send her a copy of that? Yes, I'm making sure that the committee sub is online. I'm checking now. Okay. But the next speaker is Jay. Jay Schroeder. Jay, are you with us? I am here, thank you. Okay, how you doing, Jay? Good, how's everybody today? Hi. <laughs> Thanks for letting me uh, talk to you for a minute. Um, I wanted to kind of and you also have the same offer 
if you want to stay on till it finishes in case something changes in, in your Excellent. state. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, no knock warrant portion, just so everybody's kind of clear. Um, there's been some confusion, even sometimes amongst policemen about what actually is a no knock warrant. So um, what happens when uh, an officer goes to get a no knock warrant is he has to present the information on the no knock warrant to the prosecutor and then take this information to a judge. So it's not uh, it's not um, an end all be all on on search warrants. So you have to have some pretty big substantiated evidence to get a search warrant and have a judge approve it. Um, and I believe uh, when I when I did some checking. Um, about 10% or a little less than 10% of the warrants executed by our SWAT team last year were no-knock warrants. And that doesn't mean that they, they use the no-knock provision. Um, no-knock provision um, is usually put in there if they know that someone is um, going to have a barricaded door. Um, so they would go to a residence and they wouldn't necessarily knock. They would try to get into the residence um, so the door couldn't be further breached. But if you if you would knock and announce, that would give people um, time to barricade to further a door. If there's a suspect that that's a known violent offender um, and has shot at police or has shot at um, people before, they would use that no-knock provision in there. But just because it's in there doesn't necessarily mean that they they are going to execute it in a no knock fashion. Um, in the last few years, the National Tactical Officers Association has recommended that um, I know people see on TV and SWAT shows and all these, all these <coughs> television shows that they see SWAT teams run in to, you know, bang a door, knock it down, and then go rushing in. Um, the, the NOTA, the National Tactical Officers Association, has recommended, um, and our our SWAT team um, has has taken that recommendation um, to they they what do they do is called a breach and hold. So they would come to a residence, they would announce, um, they would hit the door, they would open the door, they would uh, employ a a noise device, a diversion device, and they will hold the door and they will call people out from the residence. So um, once they believe they have everybody out and they've talked to the people that have come out, is there anybody else in the residence? If they say no, then they would be, they would begin a sweep of the residence to make sure that the house is clear. Um, and another situation, if they know that, uh, an armed suspect is, is, is holed up in a residence, um, they would, they would surround the house. They would, um, deploy the bear and they would call the person out, um, so there's, there's, there's not a whole lot of opportunities or situations where they actually would breach a door and run in without um, announcing. They even announce on most no-knock warrants. It's just a safety tool to have in there in case it meets some of these certain criteria. So um, I understand how some people think that sometimes on these no-knock warrants, it, they see people just rushing in and, and all this stuff. But that's that's actually the national standard now is getting away from these these breach and enter situations. But sometimes there is a need for it. So, I, and even I saw and it's in drug cases, but a lot of times and with drug cases, weapons are involved. So my caution would be not to necessarily remove that but it give the opportunity for that to still be in there because it doesn't just protect the policeman, which um, it protects the person and the residents. Um, so, so you're saying to leave it in the building, no knock or to amend. I, I, I would amend it and remove it. I, I think it's a pretty important tool in the toolbox. Um, it, it's everything is, is geared around citizen safety and officer safety. And I think if that, if that is, if that option isn't there, it could cause, it, it could possibly cause some problems down the road. Right. And I'm familiar with John Bruff, who knocked and he got his face shot off. And he's blind and he had to have his whole face reconstructed, uh, being the first one at the door. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know, but... Um, and I know there's been some things nationwide, and I can't, I can't necessarily speak on um, some of these other municipalities and cities and how they how they do it. But I know our, our SWAT team, 
um, is one of the better ones in the country, and and they they practice the national the national standards and recommendations. Um, is there anything else? And again, you can hang around. I see the president's back because some of these might address some of the stuff that's in there. And and uh, boss, your speakers off if you're trying to say something. Oh, no, I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm, I'm just listening uh, right okay. now. Uh, what, what can, may I ask the question? Yes, sir. Sure. Um, yeah. uh, so what for, you said, um, and I'm sorry, I missed the first part of your presentation, but you said 10% of the warrants that were issued were not, no knock warrants. Oh, of those that were issued, of the 10% that were issued, what percentage of those um, under this municipal uh, ordinance would have not been able to be issued? Um, I'm not. I did. I didn't, I'm not sure under that amount. I know that it's um, a lot of times they'll have federal search warrants and they'll have um, uh, state level search warrants. Um, but it it was just they wanted the no the no knock provision is there is more of a safety issue for the policeman and the, and the and the target of said search warrant. So um, I just think that if we would remove if we would get take that away, that we could possibly have problems down the road. Maybe we don't, but there, there's always that that opportunity if you have a tool that you can use um, and you have a professional SWAT team and you have layers of oversight. I think I think we're okay. Um, I'm not exactly well, sure on the number, but um, would it, uh, so the a typical no knock warrant would be what? what um, a tip, so if they would have um, a, a subject that uh, say I'm getting a search warrant on on John Doe, um, the informant lets me know, hey, he keeps the he keeps the door barricaded, or he has a, a dead man by the door in case he sees the police coming. He has cameras on the residence. Um, I would put that in the affidavit. He has a propensity for violence. Um, I would put that in there and that's what I would request a no knock. So if our SWAT team entered, um, it, would, it wouldn't allow him time to secure a door and make, and you know, and then set up inside a residence and wait. Okay, and you wouldn't, um, uh, but you wouldn't, I may lose power again because I saw it blink. <laughs> the, lights, <laughs> the lights just blinked again. So hopefully, I, hopefully I don't I don't lose it again. I don't know what the, what Amarin Huey is doing on our block, but something's happened. But uh, uh, but you so you wouldn't have any idea what what percentage of the ten percent would be <laughs> under a municipal ordinance. No, I just, I, 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 yeah, I'm sorry, that, no, I kind of roundabouted your question, but no, I don't know exactly the number of uh, municipal, I guess they would actually be state level warrants that were. Yeah, so that, that's my understanding that a lot of the warrants that you're talking about would be state level warrants mm -hmm. and it wouldn't be affected by this municipal ordinance, this piece, that piece of this municipal ordinance, right? Uh, so, but what this does is it helps set the stage for, um, you know, assuring that, you know, when no knock warrants are used, that they are uh, issued in a very issued and also executed in a very thoughtful manner. Uh, Absolutely. But, but, um, but this ordinance would not affect the no knock warrants that you were covering. Okay. The ones well, yeah. that you're just talking about. Okay, so state and federal level warrants. Yeah, yeah, that's, okay. that's not effective. Or, or I mean, I don't know if there's something you can do that I mean to create a level of oversight, um, like they do at the state or federal level that says, um, you know, you can, you know, if you see um, a municipal judge or something like that, if that would be um, maybe something that that would be added in there, just to add a level, another level of oversight in the city or municipal process. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, let's see. And certainly you can hang hang around. Uh, Mr. President, do you want to go on with this or do you want me to go through the other three? Go ahead and go get... through the speakers. And okay, then let's, we'll, let's, we'll let's go through the speakers. Them. We also have something that we like read in from the Ethical Society. <clears throat> I don't know if you saw that or not. Um, no, I haven't seen it. Okay, and we'll read that in. Um, so, Madam Clerk, it, it looks like Gina's next, and it's probably by phone. Yes. 
Okay, if you can bring her in there, that'd be good. Gina, are you there with us? Yeah, I'm here with you. Okay, uh, go ahead and, and we're gonna listen, okay? Hi, um, thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm Gina Trez. I'm mother of Isaiah Hammett, who was murdered by a no-knock uh, search warrant. And the reason I am speaking to testify on, I'm sorry, it's hard. Testify on my son's behalf because he's not here to testify. Um, I'd like the no-knock warrants banned. They're not safe. Not only thought they killed my son, they could have killed my father. They could have killed me. They could have killed my other children. But me and my other children was not there that day. The day they came in shooting and, and killing my son. They use a whole lot of force. They don't do what they say. Uh, they lied. They say that they, they look for cameras and everything. They say that my son watches watched the cameras and ambushed them, but there was no cameras at the house um, that day. Uh, they did not show no search warrant. So if they can have, like, the Brianna Taylor uh, bill, that's what I'm fighting for because if I could save another person's life, another family going through what me and my family go through every day, looking in holes in the walls, um, my father, what he went through and almost lost his life, that's that's the reason I'm here today and, and speaking because my son did not have a chance and I don't feel like they should have immunity because I feel like if they get rid of the immunity of the officers of what they do maybe there would be less killing maybe there wouldn't be people marching in streets because a cop killed somebody's family member maybe they wouldn't have burning buildings Maybe they wouldn't have looting. They wouldn't have nothing, none of this going on if they stopped killing our family the way that they do. They get to go home at night and kiss their kids goodnight. They get to have another birthday. They get to have Christmas. They get to have all that. But I will never have that again. I will never have a grandchild by my son. My kid's scared of the police. Scared of to even be home in their own home. It's just it ain't right, and I feel like it needs to be banned. Okay, well, I appreciate your comment. Um, I won't get in discuss as to who shot or all that stuff because that's all police matter. But I do appreciate the comments, uh, and you're welcome to hang around. Uh, if you yeah, just like the cameras, uh, Lewis, you know what I'm saying? Three years ago, we tried getting it rid. Of, uh, getting the cameras and everything, and I feel like they need to start using those cameras the way that, you know, they're supposed to do, too. Well, they're, they're, they're going to have body cameras. I think that's already been addressed. And then that's been three years, though, since we spoke on that. Well, thank, but that, thank, thank you for your, your, your talking on the subject. Uh, thank you, Ms. Torres. I really appreciate it, and thank you for uh, coming on and testifying today. Thank okay. you so much. And now uh, it looks like Tony Taylor, Madam Clerk. Yes. Is he with us? Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay. Uh, she, I'm sorry, Tony. Tony, yes. uh, okay. go ahead and we're, we, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. I just want to thank everyone for giving us this opportunity to speak. Um, I'm also a mother of a victim of police brutality. My son was Kerry Ball Jr that was shot and killed April 24th, 2013. And I just listened to a lot of things that were said on this call as far as where bills were put in place, talking about the excessive force, everything that was put, but it was all put in place after 2014. But like I was saying, this is no disrespect to anybody. I feel like a lot of those policies were brought up and brought to attention after the city of St. Louis know what they did to my child. 
Carrie was shot a total of 21 times on 8th and Carr out of 32 bullets. 21 gunshot wounds is in his body out of 32 bullets with a total of 25 gunshot wounds because of entry and exit. I feel like the immunity needs to be stripped from them because on everybody else's job, you can't go to work and be able to shoot whoever and have immunity and just get off. I also feel like a lot of the defunding from the police department need to be put into recreational centers for these children. Bring that back. What happened to that? These youth are crying out for help. When all of that looting and rioting just started, those children need us. That was them crying out. I just was at a rally, not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before, and a youth spoke. She said, we're lost, guys. We don't know which direction to go. We need child. We got to do something different. We got to put some funding into Kim's office to let her properly investigate these police involved shooting. We got to make sure that we both the right people in office that's going to be there to help us. And I feel that if you would start actually getting some judges in place that would sentence these cops to some real jail time, that's when the murder of our loved ones would actually stop. And I just want to thank y'all for giving me this moment. So you're, you're, you're welcome, Tony. Um, thank you, Mrs. So, Taylor. Um, and then uh, last on the list is, looks like Darian Wilson. And uh, are you with us? That, from Neighborhood Outreach Center? Madam I'm Clark, is he? still on mute. Okay. If, if he could unmute himself. Yes, I'm on. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm listening right now. I'm going to defer my comments, uh, maybe for a later time. I'm just uh, doing some information gathering right now. So I'm going to continue to listen to the meeting and the information on the bill first. But thank you for the opportunity. Okay, and then, so just hanging there. So Madam Clerk, there was a, also a letter sent to us from the Ethical Society. Uh, can you read that or otherwise I can? Do you have that? No, I don't have it in front of me. Give me a second, I can pull it up. Okay, pull I that have. up and read, read that in so everybody can hear it a little better. You have it, or I can kind of blow it up or put a second pair of glasses on and I can see it a little better. <laughs> was it in the documents that was sent? No, they sent, they sent it to everyone. It, well, it says, good morning. <clears throat> our sentiments, uh, our, well, let me see if I can, it says our sentiments, I think they sent it to all the aldermen. Our sentiments about the bill remain the it's same. Under, it's in the folder called written comments. Okay. Uh, Oh, thanks. Thank you, Alderwoman Howard. I... Um, it was dated June 22nd, 2020. I sent it about the bill remained the same. The things listed are policy already, except for line four. We have a force continuum that requires us to de-escalate. Her policy, we are you we her policy, we are to use the least amount of force necessary at all times. We have the duty to intervene and do what's right at all times. Any circuit attorney can issue charges when we don't. Any IAD can pursue charges against officers and terminate when we don't. St. Louis, Missouri Police Department has an obligation to charge everyone that violates policy this way. Chokeholds have been banned in St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department for over a decade. The duty to report every time we remove our weapons is an okay policy because we have an officers that pull their weapons too much when it's not necessary. It's a red flag. 
However, we may also lead some officers not to remove their weapons when they should. Heather Taylor, Ethical Society of Police. And I would say it's very rare that the police association and the ethical society actually <clears throat> believe the same, you know, that they're on the same side. Uh, I guess their concern is for the officers. Uh, and again, the one I know is John Bruff, who basically, I said, he got shot through the door in his face. He's blind and it, he had to have his whole face reconstructed. Um, I don't know. I, 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 you know, I believe we need to do some of this stuff. And I think we need to put some of this in law. But I did want to read that from the Ethical Society. <clears throat> and uh, John uh, Schroeder is with the, uh, well, I guess he's speaking for himself, but he's with the association. I think their concern also is about the safety of the police. I also received a text that the city won't be able to man state, federal no-knock warrants. So state, state and federal no-knock warrants, uh, the only ones we could ban is the SLPD. Uh, I think that's the extent of the text. It says it says uh, that we can't, the DEA is another one, it's a federal agency, we can't ban them. Uh, I don't know what all the amendments are, but Mr. President, are you still around or did your computer leave yep. us? No, okay. I'm here. So, that, <laughs> I'm so that's here. everything yeah. Everything in there that <clears throat> the, the text is that the text that I received, the, the written letter, you know, from the Ethical okay. Society, as well as we can't be in federal DEA, uh, state, state or federal knock, no no knock warrants. The only thing we can actually do is be in the St. Louis police from doing it. Uh, that's just all the text and stuff. So I'm 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 ready to how you can proceed. However, yeah, yeah. I, it uh, to, to clarify um, one of your comments, Mr. Chairman, uh, we don't have the power to um, to ban or to uh, we don't have governance over um, right state and federal saying. judges and what they do and what they issue, right? Uh, so. Uh, the things that we're talking about related to no knock warrants in this bill would just uh, be municipal violations and municipal, uh, you know, something that would be issued by the municipal courts. And that would, that would be very few, right? Yeah, but that's right. what we can do. If any, I don't, I don't, I'm, uh, you so know, I'm even stretching yeah. my mind to try to figure out which ones, if any, based on the ones that was described earlier by the, um, the officer um, of those that, that they typically go after. But this kind of sets a stage uh, for us and um, uh, you know, moving no, I, forward. I, I would say you're right. And the municipal warrants, basically traffic tickets and you know, nonviolent stuff. So yeah. it'd be very rare. Yeah. Uh, so, if you like me to, I'll go through the please, please uh, the, the the amendments. All right. So, amendment number amendment number one. And everybody should uh, have the amendments. They should have received them. We have eight amendments. And again, all of these amendments they clean up uh, just some things in the language. Uh, it helps. Uh, it helps the bill. So if it's ever challenged in court, the language would be uh, standard language that's used that has uh, withstood court challenges across the country. Uh, so first one, uh, amendment number one, beginning page one, line 11, after the words by officer, insert the following words in non-deadly force encounters. Can I ask a technical question? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are we voting on each amendment one by one as we go through right now? Yes, yes, okay, yes. Is that when yeah. we get the right bill? Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, so we would need a motion. So I move. I move for adoption of Amendment Number One, as as stated. And I, and I will second it. And uh, I, I, previous role, if anybody has an objection, the previous role. We'll move on to the next amendment. Uh, amendment Number Two. 
Uh, Remember, number, number two, uh, started on page page one, line 12, after the words, but is not limited to, insert the following words, any sustained and intentional. So we would need a motion on amendment number two. I move, I move that we adopt amendment number two as, as stated. Second. Previous roll. No objection previous roll. Amendment number two is in there. And so amendment number three, uh, beginning on page two, line 21, after the words, another sworn employee win, and insert the words uh, excessive. Uh, we need a motion on amendment number three. I'm losing track, I'm sorry. I move for adoption of amendment number three as stated. Second. Previous role. Any problem with previous role? Let's go to amendment number four. So amendment number four, um, uh, uh, beginning on line one, beginning page three, line one, to page three, line four, as follows. Um, Strike out, strike out the words, notify their supervisor upon receipt of an allegation of unreasonable or unreported use of force by an officer, officers who observe force, and insert in, li in line thereof the following, verify that their supervisors are notified following any use of force incident upon receiving notice of an allegation or excessive use of force, officers shall verify their supervisors are aware of the allegations of unreasonable and un or, or unreported use of force by an officer. Officers who observe excessive use of force of. Hey, can I acquire the president? No, yes. Go, go right ahead. Mr. President, out of curiosity, what would the verif in your mind, what would the verification process looks like? It's just yeah, so so out. the the reason the reason we're changing that from notify to verify, because oftentimes there's multiple officers on site, right? So if there are multiple officers on site sometimes it can be upwards 10 20 30 officers or whatever uh, we're we want to be clear we're not asking that 30 reports be filed right uh, we want to assure that uh, that 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 incident was reported right so so once is noted once it's reported uh, any of the other officers they then will have a requirement to at least verify that the report has been filed by an officer that was on site so there would be an incident report that's uh completed yes yes and so how would an officer verify if you had 30 officers that were just part talk of to their supervisor or uh just inquire to see that it was actually filed the paperwork was actually filed so, okay. so it holds, it holds, you know, it still holds everybody on the site accountable, uh, but uh, they will still, they will have a duty to go back and at least verify. Um, if you would like, we can keep the, the original language it just means that we'll have 30 reports filed. It doesn't, I'm no, good. No, no, I, I was just curious as to, you know, what that process looked like. That's all. I'm fine. Okay. Okay. So then, uh, We'll, we'll entertain a motion on uh, any amendment. So moved. Four. So moved. Second. Previous roll. And there's no objection to previous roll. Amendment number five. Amendment number five uh, is starting on page one, line 15, to page one, line 16, as follows. Beginning at page one, line 15, strike out the words, guilty of a misdemeanor punishable by imprisonment of not more than one year or a fine of not more than $2,000 or above. And insert uh, in lie thereof, uh, read the following, punishable by uh, fines and imprisonment of the city of St. Louis, Article, Article 5. Mr. Chairman? So, 
Yeah, so you? did you stop? Yeah. I, I heard. No, I'm just, <laughs> oh, sound no, like you sound no, like you were no, stopping no, me. No, 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 no. It, it no, sound no. like you were swinging the gavel on me. No, you can't. No, I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to be right. sit here and listen. Okay, <laughs> Article Six. All right. Did we get that? Did we pass that? No, no, no. We're I, I, article no. number five, so we need a motion to pass our uh, amendment. So number moved. Five. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Amendment oh. number five. Amendment okay. number five. Article, article number four. Yeah, amendment number five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sound like you said article number six. I, I, oh. I probably did. Who knows? I'm half. A oh, oh, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I heard him say six, and I didn't think we had this. No. Up. That's what no, no. No. Okay. No. I make I was... a motion to pass out in that amendment number five. Second. In previous role, is there any objection to previous role? Let's go to number six. All right, and number six, uh, both numbers uh, six, seven, and eight are referring to the same. They, they're all uh, changing the penalty uh, clauses in the various different sections. So uh, amendment number six, um, page two, line 13 to page two, line 14. Beginning on page two, line 13, strike out the words guilty of a misdemeanor punishable by imprisonment of not more than one year and or a fine, not more than 2000 or both and insert and lie thereof uh, punishable by the fines and imprisonment of the city of St. Louis, article number four. So we need a motion. I have a question. Okay, please. Um, Mr. President, uh, I just would like to know the history between t be about taking this out. What what was the reason you took all the the fine and so forth? Is it because it's already covered under city charter? No. Uh, on, what we want to do is because remember we we oftentimes go back and look at uh, you know uh, increasing the fines, right? <laughs> Uh, right now, our maximum allowable fine under municipal violation is five hundred dollars. Yeah, and um, but if the fines change in the future, right, and if um, you know the penalty clauses and imprisonment uh, availability or whatever changes in the future, this allows the bill to stand. It allows it still allows them to uh, issue fines based on whatever. Is available to issue whatever you can do under under this municipal, municipal violation, okay. and also how many jail time uh, based on whatever uh, is allowable by the courts at the time of the violation, right? Okay. Opposed to just fixing it at what we can do today. Okay, I I got it. That's fine. I just was curious because they're all parallel, you know, the changes for all of them. So. Okay. Uh, we'll move. Are we ready to move this? Are we on well, five? Yeah, yeah. So are we doing all three together? Uh, I think can we, we have do all three together. Yeah. Or are we doing one by one? Let's just do them one by one. So you have Okay, so that was number that was number six. Yeah, so yeah, was that so, that was six. I'm sorry. So I we need a motion. motion to pass board bill numbers uh, amendment number six to board bill. 63 committee substitute on passing okay. out of the committee. And do we have a second in previous role? Second. In previous role, no objection. Let's go to number seven. Number seven, uh, number seven, start on page three, line nine uh, to page three, line 11, beginning on page three, line nine, strike out the following guilty of a misdemeanor punishable by imprisonment of not more than one year and a fine of not more than $2,000 or, uh, or both. Uh, and insert uh, and lie thereof punishable by fines and, and imprisonment of the city of St. Louis Charter, Article 4. I make a motion to pass an, uh, amendment number seven to board bill <coughs> 63 committee substitute out. Second. Second. And previous role, any objection? Mr. President, number eight. Uh, amendment number eight, starting on page four, line 17, uh, beginning on page four, uh, to page four, line 19. 
Beginning on page four, line 17, strike out the words, guilty of misdemeanor, punishable by imprisonment, or not more than one year, or, or fine, not more than $2,000 or above, and insert in lie thereof, punishable by fines in, uh, and imprisonment of the city's charter, Article 4. Do we have a I motion? make a motion to pass out Amendment Number 8 to Board Bill Number 63, Committee Sub. Second. In previous roll. So now I have a, a technical question. Um, do we vote now on the bill as amended or do we have to uh, vote so on the bill? The, the committee, committee sub, sub as, as, we got one committee more. Sub as, as amended. Committee we got one sub, more amendment though. I thought that was, there was eight of them, right? Or is there There's one nine. Left? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Where is uh, I must have said Carol, but thank you. Uh, There's nine. All the women, Howard. I apologize. The last one. I'm getting text as we go. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have number nine? Yeah, I'm pulling it up now. Okay. I believe number nine was just a duplicate. Yeah. Number so uh, a number number nine to board bill uh, six three committee substitute to amend said bill page two line twenty one as follows, beginning on page two line twenty one insert the words excessive. Um, well, that's that's a duplicate. Uh, it's number three. Yes. Amendment three covered that. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting yes. text as we go as to. <laughs> Yeah. That's um, it. So that was Amendment Three actually yep. covered the same thing. It's yeah. the same amendment. Okay. So so what we have before in front of us then would be Board Bill sixty three committee substitute as amended. Yes. Um, so I, I it, it's up to everybody. Do you guys want to vote now on this or do you wanna listen to some more public testimony on it? Um it's kind of whatever Mr. you want to do. Mr. do Mr. Chairman, I think that it's really important that uh, the board, we move forward on, on this issue. Um, uh, you know, we well, certainly shouldn't wait. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. No, no, no. I wasn't talking about, I was talking about the people that were holding on that said they wanted to save their comments to the end. I'm perfectly willing to take a vote. In fact, I'll even make a motion that we pass board bill, uh, Committee Board Bill 63, Committee Substitute. Mr. Chair. Yes, yes. We have one more speaker, Mr. Wilson, Darren Wilson. And he deferred to wait till afterwards. So I don't know. Do you want to check with him to see if he has any comments? Uh, Mr. Wilson, do you have comments? I don't know if he's stuck with us. Okay, no, no, no. I'm on. I'm still on. Uh, at this time, no, uh, I'm, I am listening and reviewing uh, everything that you're discussing on the bill, and I do appreciate the information, um, but at this time, I do not have any comments on this issue, but thank you for the offer and the invitation, but I will continue to join in on the meetings uh, and follow this issue as well, so thank you. Well, no, thank you, and I appreciate that the, the president of the board has changed some language, so this will hold up in court, and it seems like a very good bill. It's a a great start in all board bills and laws. You got to pass the best version you can. And then later in life, I'm sure there'll be, you know, things added to it. Like you talked about when the fines go up. Now we don't have to have another board bill to say, okay, we got to do this over because now we limited ourselves. So I, I'm perfectly willing to take a motion to pass this out of I, committee. One I more would thing, like to speak, Mr. Chair. Uh, we had Darcy Kern who wanted to look at the bill and have some comments, and you didn't go back to her. I'm not trying okay. to interrupt the flow here. No, 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 no. That's fine, Miss Kern. Are you are you with us still? She was. I just saw her pop up here. Oh, Miss Kern, are you still Hi. there? Hi, I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me? Sure, go ahead. We're, we're Hi, thank you for letting me speak. Um, now that I have the full bill. 
Um, I did take a look at it and the amendment seemed to be um, like common sense, uh, but I had some questions about uh, some of the, the fines that would be levied on police who did break these laws. So um, I was wondering if there's a designated place for the money that the police would have to pay. Is there some kind of restitution yeah. or um, like to, to the family of the person that you know has been killed or what happens to that fine money? I, I, I would think if you let me, I would think that would be a civil trial but but maybe I don't know, Mr. Pre President. Yeah, she raises a, a, a it's actually a, a, a good idea that, um, okay, so what she's saying is that, you know, in the fines and penalty clause, where the police officer would have to pay a fine and that fine would just go back to the city, right? Uh, you know, should that fine go into a pool for whatever, right? For, for families uh, that have, um, uh that that have had one of their loved ones um uh you know rights violated or whatever it's a good it's a good idea i think we should we that's something that we can certainly take up on the floor um uh it would give us a chance to review and talk to uh the budget director and the comptroller's office to see the possibility of that i would imagine a special fund would have to be created and the bill would have to call out for the funds to go to a special fund, right? Um, but it, but it's a it's a great idea. <laughs> I, I, I like that idea. Thank you. Um, I just had a few more questions. I was wondering if um, there is in the duty to intervene, if in the department policy there's some kind of protection for officers reporting. Um, uh, misuse or, or use of excessive force, if there's some kind of protection for officers who are reporting um, that they have observed this from retaliation, because I hear from a lot of police who want to do the right thing that they have, um, you know, faced retaliation from the department or they get moved to less desirable positions because they report and do the right thing. Is there something um, on that that you know about? Yes, we, we, we took uh, up uh, uh, an ordinance a number of years ago uh, uh, that put in protections in place for anyone that reports any wrongdoing in any city department whatsoever. So uh, they would be covered under that ordinance. Um, so they and, they and also they would have standing in, I would assume that they would have standing in the courts if they can show that they were demoted, uh, they were put on a wrong, you know, uh, uh, undesirable duty or hours or whatever based on their reporting, right? Uh, so we, I think we would be slow, I think we would definitely uh, be covered under that. It's the uh, whistleblower statute that we, we passed, the whistleblower law. Okay, thank you for commenting on that. And I also had a question about the settlements that the city pays out on behalf of police who are um, convicted of uh, misconduct. Um, the city to date has paid four, over $4 million in settlements over the past 10 years. And I am a, a speech language pathologist and my husband is an occupational therapist and we work very hard to get our licenses and it's our duty to protect our licenses by making sure that we're doing the right thing. And if we do the wrong thing, not only do we get fined, but we can lose our license. And then we don't have any, we don't have any way to make money. But when police do the wrong thing, not only do they not lose their jobs oftentimes, but they also get hired at other departments and they just get shuffled around and it's an endless cycle and there's never any justice for the families. And I, as a taxpayer in St. Louis, am so against my tax money being paid to, to make up for the, the misuse of force by police that we're paying. And I just can't see how if I do the wrong thing in my job, I lose my license and I can't do that job anymore. But police get to keep their keep their jobs 
and then I have to pay for their mistakes. And I want to know why there's not anything in this bill to address the taxpayers having to pick up the tab for police um, police violence. Why is that not in the bill? Well, uh, a couple things. Uh, part of number one, uh, um, Ms. Kern, uh, you know, I just want to thank you for uh, for your impassioned plea and um, uh, also let you know that we're all on the same page with that. Uh, for a number of years, you know, I've been pushing and fighting to uh, to assure that we have a record in place. So the city of St. Louis, we're just not stuck picking up these lawsuits, uh, largely non-contested lawsuits, and paying out millions of dollars a year. It's just ridiculous. Uh, so part of what we've done is push for body cameras. So at least we have a body camera on, on a body camera where the officer cannot change what, you know, what happened and, and the people that are there uh, cannot either. It's clear based on the various different body camera footages that go directly to the cloud that we can see indeed what has happened. And uh, if we have officers that are in the wrong, they need to be held accountable for it. But right now we have absolutely no record of it. So we're left just paying out millions of dollars a year and it's just ridiculous. So that's part of what, um, you know, part of the, the fight uh, to begin to get that in place. <laughs> and then some of these things are, need to be held, uh, handled on, at the federal level. And unfortunately, we don't have control, uh, direct control over that. And we don't have direct control of federal law. We, we're lobbying our uh, state and federal officials uh, to push for some of those changes so that we can see some adjustments in the qualified immunity that allows that to happen. Aside from the qualified immunity, sorry, I just have one more thing. It's not, it's not me saying that I am, um, that, that's not even something I'm discussing. I'm talking about the malpractice suits. So if a doctor yes. gets sued or if my husband or I get sued, we have to pay. I can't call up, you know, the taxpayers and say, hey, guys, I know I did wrong on my job, but pick up the tab for me. Oh, no, Why you're 100% you're correct. You want, you're you're one hundred percent correct. Uh, part of it, part of it is that is that um, uh, right now we have no record, right? We are it's just it's just hearsay. We have absolutely no record uh, of of the exchanges that are happening, right? We have no record at all. So first thing is we need to get a record of it. Second thing is um, for them being able to um, move from one one department to another. Uh, we put some provisions in this bill that uh, when and if the national database becomes available, we will have a requirement that our, our department reports directly into that database with the various different items we listed in, uh, in the board bill here. So we're covering that for, for the future. Um, and, you know, um, again, uh, you, we are going to have to see some adjustments in that qualified immunity law also, which will help us do more things and have more flexibility locally at not just in the city of St. Louis, but departments across the country uh, in terms of uh, requiring police officers to then have, um, you know, carry their own insurance or, or deal if they've found that what they've done has been unlawful based on the data that we've uh, received, it would be clear that the city of St. Louis would not be left holding the bag on a lawsuit. But right now the lawsuits are being filed against the city of St. Louis. We have nothing to show that, uh, you know, what, whether the lawsuit was valid or not. So we're left just paying, them, paying those lawsuits off. Did, did that answer but, the- but, but please, please hope, Please understand that we we're all in agreement with 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 what you're what you're saying, and we're trying to find ways to address those. And um, part of what we all need to do is just push harder on our federal officials to give us some flexibility locally to be able to deal with those issues directly. 
Thank you. I would also like to ask why there's no mention of discontinuing the use of tear gas on taxpayers as part of this bill on police use of force. Uh, um, we, uh, you know, that's, that's not, uh, 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 you know, one of those issues that, that, uh, that we were, we were covering that we covered in the bill because we were, we were, you know, we were definitely just targeting those things that are life threatening, those things that, um, uh, 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 because of their abuse, it can end in a person's life being taken. Um, but, but that's certainly something we can we can look at in future bills and even when we get to the floor. Thank you. Uh, I would just like to say people do die from tear gas. There was a woman in Columbus, Ohio, who died from having asthma attack after she was gassed by police. So it is actually a life threatening wow. uh, use of force. So thank you so much for letting thank me comment. You. And um, I look forward to seeing these changes and many more coming ahead. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for for your testimony, Ms. Kern. So if there's no other speakers, I, I think we should go ahead and, uh, you know. Uh, Aren't you going to ask the committee if they want to comment? Um, certainly. If OK, then let's go down the list. If the committee does want to comment, uh, Alderman Boyd, any comments? No question. Okay. Uh, Alderwoman Howard. I would just like to thank those people that testified and, and just a comment that most of the police officers that work in the city of St. Louis day to day do the best they can. And that it's sad that, you know, we've come to this point where we have to take up this type of legislation. Um, I understand that, you know, because you have a few people you know, doing, not doing their job appropriately, this comes into play. And I hate to see the whole department or all the police officers painted with the broad brush, but I am for this and I, I will support it. And I appreciate the give and take and the, uh, the calm, moderate uh, input that we got from people that testified. Thank you. And I, I agree with that statement 100%. Um, I don't hear my, uh, so Tamika Hubbard or all the women Tamika Hubbard. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of uh, the committee and also President Reed for definitely bringing this forth. I think it's something that we do um, need. I have one quick question and then I guess uh, I have a few comments about it. Um, I think it's something that we definitely need, but I, one of the speakers, I guess he was a, a part of our police department or something. He made a comment about um, about how having the ability to use a no-knock warrant, how it protects the resident. And I guess I just, if he's still on, I wanted to, him to, to explain that because that didn't um, quite make sense to me. But I, I do get it in, in some scenarios uh, when you have a, a lot of stuff going on with a particular offender, it, if you have to actually knock, then it, it can impact um just how you handle things, but I do support this this um, bill, though. But if he's still on, could he answer that? I'm not sure if he's Jay. Had... Jay, are you still here? Jay, is he still there? There he is. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So I mean, I mean, your your question is that um, it, it's it's supposed to be the safest, so. Um, in a no knock, it's it's a surprise element with that. So if you were announcing um, on a guy who you knew was probably violent, um, you take away that element of surprise, which would give him the opportunity maybe to to take a position and begin firing. And now you're in into a gun battle versus if you had that element of surprise, you could get around that that type of situation. Does that make sense? Okay, so in essence, is is protecting the offender from himself. At, from retaliating if he has knowledge that you all yeah, are. So, yeah, it, and, and that's what it's used for. So if they know a guy that maybe um, has committed multiple violent felonies with firearms and they can say, well, we have this tool here so we can get into a residence with the element of surprise still. And maybe instead of him, me banging on the door and trying to get into a house um, 
and him waking up and then deciding I'm going to take a position and get into a shootout, you get into a house and he's still asleep on the couch and then you take him into custody without any incident. That just okay. gives you that opportunity. Okay. And, and so uh, um, prior to you all, uh, I guess, applying for these warrants or whatever, or I know there's extensive surveillance that goes on prior to you all, because for one, you have to track yes. them to know where they are. Yes. Anyway, so you all do use a lot of different measures to even um, make contact with that person prior to, right? Yeah, yes. I mean, that's the, the whole, it's, it's a whole, uh, to get a no-knock, you have to have a whole lot of stuff that comes into play. Um, I've done probably a hundred or more search warrants and I think two or three were no knock. So, um, there's, it's just not, doesn't happen a lot. And it's only used in those situations where you think you're going to have, you could possibly have some type of violent altercation. Okay. Thank, thank you uh, for clearing that up. But I, I do understand the terrain that we are in. Uh, in our country right now. And um, I, I think whatever measures that we can use to keep everyone safe, that's something that I um, am in support of. And so um, I, I think it would be in our best interest as a city to move forward with the changes that we are making. So that's all I have uh, regarding the bill, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And thank you. Um, we'll go down this list. And John Muhammad's not here. Uh, other woman Pam Boyd. Other woman Boyd, are you still with us? Uh, other woman Shamine Clark Hubbard. No questions or comments. Thank you. Okay. Uh, does anyone else on the committee have any comments? And Mr. President, if not, do you want to make a closing statement or just move on? Uh, I'm just. Uh, you know, thank uh, thank everybody and ask for your favorable approval on on the board bill. Um, like I said, these are these you know all these changes are changes that uh, that I believe we need as a city. Um, I think when you look across the country and look what other municipalities are doing across the country, uh, this puts us solidly within the alignment of what other cities are doing, and. Um, you know, on the no-knock warrant piece, uh, the no-knock warrant piece, again, what we're governing here is uh, is municipal violations, right? Uh, so, uh, so you know, we can't govern what a state judge or a federal judge will do an issue, right? They can still do it. Um, uh, and then, you know, even under, you know, what uh, Officer uh, Jay Schroeder, uh, um, testified to, uh, he even, you know, admitted that, you know, that uh, the majority of, if not all of those warrants that he discussed were all uh, non-municipal uh, type violations. So, um, I, again, I would ask for your favorable uh, approval and support for this bill moving forward. Uh, I think it helps us um, address the issues that um, that the people are looking for us to address and it helps to um, helps to set a new standard in our police department and um, and protects good officers and assures that the officers that that are operating outside of those the guidelines that there are some repercussions attached to it So at this point, then I would entertain a motion that we pass for Bill 63. I'm sorry, someone said. This is Sharita. We never did adopt a committee sub. Oh, okay. So we need to. So we need to adopt the committee sub, and then I thought we did adopt to put it in front. Well, anyway, so for so so let's adopt. Then we need a motion to adopt a committee substitute, and then I guess. And then I guess just for procedure, because I'm a little. Then we adopt the amended one. Is that how? Yeah, we do you, that? you, you. What, what, what you, what you have right now? You move to, uh, to bring the committee sub in front of you, so you have that committee sub in front of you. Uh, so now we need a motion, and then we amended that committee sub. So now we need a motion um, to pass committee sub uh, as amended out. Would it do well, that's what I thought. Because I, I thought we already took the vote to bring committee sub in front of us. 
Yeah. That so, was the so with the next, that we had to adopt it. We didn't have to adopt it. We will now. No, no. Yeah, she, you you moved to get it in front of you, right? So yeah. we have a, we got no. it in front of us. Then we amended it. So now that we have the amended committee sub in front of us, now our next thing is to move to uh, pass committee subs to uh, sixty-three as amended. amended. Out that's with that's what pass I thought. Recommendation. So so then that's the motion I'm looking for. Is uh, the past board bill 63 committee substitute as amended out of committee. So we I take a motion on that. So move. I'm, I'm Second. And I'll, I'll call for previous role unless someone has an objection to previous role. And I would ask that the clerk uh, puts that out on our website as soon as possible. Uh, I'm getting texts from people saying, can we make sure to get that out? So if, if you could please put that out on the website. And I don't think we have any other business in front of us. So I would move that uh, unless somebody has some other business that we adjourn the meeting. I wanna just thank oh, each sorry. and every one of you for the time. I wanna thank all the speakers that, that uh, called up and, and came online to speak from both sides. Um, I think that any time we have a robust and in-depth discussion on these things, we end up with a better product. And uh, you can see by some of the changes that I believe we've uh, fine-tuned and we have a, a better product in front of us. And that, that's thanks largely in part to all the different comments we've gotten from um, people all over the city about things they'd like to see in an ordinance like this and all of the members of the committee. So I just want to thank each and every one of you for your thoughtful comments and your support um, uh, on, on this bill and this matter. And uh, thank you for the positive vote too. And I move that we adjourn this session, this uh, public Come safety committee. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> seconded and previous role and thank you. thanks everyone all in favor aye, aye. <laughs> all right see you meeting adjourned